Hello and welcome to this Taking Time with Tasha. Today I will be showing you five different approaches to cut work, which I tried out on my gold work leaves design. I say five, but it's really six because I would hate for you to feel shortchanged. And there's two of them that aren't strictly cut work in the traditional sense, so it's up to you if you want to count them in or not. But hopefully everyone can agree that at least five of them are cut work relevant. So first up we have the Bright Check cut work paired piece. I started with something both hard and easy. I should probably mention first of all that cut work is where you lay cut to size pieces of pearl onto your surface as a fill method. You can use whatever kind of pearl you like, smooth pearl, rough pearl or as in this example, Bright Check. Prior to filming, I prepped the base with a string bump padding so that I had something to build onto, but that's not what this video is all about, so I skipped that bit and hopefully I'm getting straight to the good stuff. I started in the middle so that you can always work away from this common point and you sort of set your angle in the centre and then try and maintain it throughout for some sort of attempt at consistency. Whether that is well placed or not, we will see. With cut work, there's a lot of trial and error, and the more you do, the better you get at judging it. I should also point out at this stage that this isn't an instructional video, merely the documentation and my thoughts on this project, so I'm still very much honing my own skills, and if you want to learn for yourself, you really should check out a proper teaching programme like you might find from online classes by the London Embroidery School, which are super friendly, and they're linked in the description if you do want to check them out. I'll be the first to say that I think cut work is easily one of the hardest gold work techniques. And so when I say I started with something hard and something easy, I really meant it, both are true. The pairing of this leaf is the element that looks to make it harder, as you not only have to try and get one side to look nice, but then to make the other side also look nice and be a reflection of the first side. You can see as this progresses that I lost a lot, if not all of the shape of my leaf in this process and it starts to look more and more like a wheat sheaf than a leaf in my attempts to keep the angle. The easy part was the fact that I chose to use Bright Check for it. I have two types of Bright Check to play with and they're slightly different in their pattern so you can sort of tell them apart even though they're both highly textured and you get a little bit of the difference between them. Alternating between the two looks really pretty and I'm pleased to say that I think that this was a good choice, but I do think that the Bright Check, because it is so textured, covers over all sorts of sins that I am hiding under there because of my lack of technique. I would also say that I didn't really leave enough room in the middle for the pearl to drop down into the groove cleanly and this starts to really show and the struggle to become apparent when the second side goes in. The ends just happen to cover over quite well, which is something at least, and by some miracle, I did manage to slip in an equal amount of pearls on each side. However, as much as I'm glad of this from a finished perspective, if I had managed to keep the original shape of the leaf, then there shouldn't have been an equal number of pearls on both sides of the leaf as they should have been slightly different shapes. So kind of a win and a loss there. Overall, I'd give myself a five out of 10 for this one. Good effort. It's not great in the end though, but it's not terrible either. Next up, to come at it from a different angle, I prepared a string bump raising again but this time over the whole leaf shape, so no groove down the middle. It was time to be brave and use smooth and rough pearl for the fill this time. I say that because smooth pearl in particular bruises, marks and cracks so much easier than the bright check, so it's much more likely to show me up. I was trying to get more of an essing effect finish with the pearl, which is where the pearl snakes around the padding and it sort of appears to like tuck in underneath itself.
These cutwork leaves follow on from my previous videos, focusing on the passing thread leaves and experimental gogwork leaves you might catch a few glimpses of in the shots. So if you see something else that you'd like to know more about, I've probably already got a video on about it and do check the links in the description for more details about those. Again, working from the middle out, I try to maintain the angle. With cut work, the size really is absolutely everything. And the tricky thing is getting the right size. But even then, trying to get that piece out again to use as a master is a real challenge in itself. And it's always this sort of big trade-off you have to decide to make to risk whether you ruin a good piece that you've already got down in the attempt to get it out and use it as a guide to get another good piece off of it. Very challenging, I would say, with this one, and hmm, not so impressed. So I'm giving myself a 4 out of 10 for this one. It's okay, let's say no more and move on. To give myself a little rest, I took a slight side step and tried basket weave in cut work. I really enjoyed this, and I was surprised at the simplicity of the basket weave when I tried it in passing thread. So trying it again in cut work was very appealing, as it, for the most part, takes away the part that I find the most challenging, which is cutting the length of the pearls correctly, and the fact that the length of the pearl is ever-changing. With basket weave, once you've established the length that is right for your strings spacing, then it should be the same for all the rest, except for a few little half stitches on the ends of every other row. I prepped a hard string base for this one, unlike when I did it in the passing thread where I used a soft string for the padding. The, the hard string does give you a bit more height, which is fun because it's more dramatic, but it does make the ends a bit more frayable, so not all fun. The pattern with basket weave is super satisfying. As soon as you can start to see it, it really feels like it builds up quite quickly, which spurs you on. The string that I used wasn't the greatest in hindsight, and as with all of these leaves and this whole set of projects, I have been using up what I have, so I used the string which I already had at home, which was probably too synthetic -y and silky, which makes my ends quite unnecessarily difficult, because they are really slippy. I also really should have measured the spacing between the strings when I laid them, but in my enthusiasm, I didn't. So the length of the pearls needed was not totally consistent, which means that a few of them have cracked in some places, but hey, you live and learn, right? Six out of 10 for this one. Enjoyed it and would try it again. And I'm sure if I did, it would be better still. Coming back to the more traditional approaches with cut work, I thought I'd try it with cardboard underneath. This did not feature in any of my books as a raising technique, but I've definitely seen this in real life. And when it's done properly, it gives a really sharp edge to your pieces. So maybe this would help me more with my length judgment as it's really clear where the edge is supposed to be. The first cardboard I picked up was a mistake and I quickly realized that as it was corrugated, so as soon as I started to cut it, it began to separate and collapse in on itself and I realised it wasn't going to provide that sharp, clean edge that I was looking for. Once I'd located a more suitable card board, it all came together quite quickly. I placed it with a little bit of Pritt stick just to keep it in place while I worked on it and that seemed to hold just fine. I used a pattern of two bright check to one rough pearl for a change and started in the middle to set that angle once again. The rough pearl is a lot smoother than the bright check, which makes it really drop down within the pattern. The thing with the cardboard that I don't know is that if I should be cutting it slightly longer than the width of the cardboard so that it's got a little bit of room to go around the edge of the cardboard and meet the fabric on the flat or if it should be exactly the same length as the cardboard so that it's sort of like stacked on top of it but 
from the side this would expose the cardboard a little bit. From memory I can only really think of seeing the cardboard with passing over it, which again doesn't really help here. But without any image examples readily accessible, I went and tried to aim for more of the wraparound effect for the rough pearl, but the stacking for the bright check because of the size difference. Being so much bigger, it simply couldn't wrap around in the same way. Keeping the shape and judging the size on this was a lot easier. So it came along really quite quickly, which was super pleasing. Not having the extra fullness in the centre with the cardboard was a bit of a concern because that normally stops your pearls from bagging out and getting damaged because they are properly supported in the centre. But it seems not to have really come to anything in this case. I guess as there's no movement from the cardboard because it is quite solid, you perhaps don't have to expect it to bag out as much. Either that or I judged the length of each and every pearl to exact perfection, which seems unlikely. However, looking at the overall effect, I'm going to give this a solid 6 out of 10. I hope you agree. Bolstered by the cardboard leaf outcome, I went back and thought that Smooth Pearl all of a sudden seemed like a good idea again. Having tried two lots of soft string padding and cardboard, I thought that I should use a felt pad for a change. Once again, in the interests of using what I had, I used this black felt, where in real life it probably should have been cream or yellow, which does make this a little bit more jarring than it needs to be. The felt pad does give you a nice roundness to it, and a sort of softness that is a complete contrast to the cardboard which I just worked on. And it makes it easy to drop the stitches down into the centre of the pad, as there's little to no resistance for your poor old fingers, which have taken a bit of a battering at this point. On this one, however, I was determined to keep the shape better than I had on the first example, and also to keep the angle. Mixed reviews on that one. I mean, I knew cut work was hard, but man, this was hard. The size of the pearl is constantly changing and it makes you feel like every piece needs multiple adjustments and is really hard fought. By the middle of this, I was convinced that starting it was a big mistake. The shape was looking better, but the lengths of the pearl just felt rubbish and all the confidence that I had built up from the cardboard leaf was well and truly gone. I wasn't sure if it was just the black underneath coming through that was really upsetting me. So much so that in the center, I was still really undecided about how I was going to finish that. In hindsight, that really didn't help. As I should have learned from the first leaf, having the right amount of space left in the center for however you plan to finish it is a real consideration that should be made at the start of the design, not a working progress as you're going through. However, that was the situation I found myself in, and so as it had bailed me out before and I'd had good fun doing it, I decided to see if good old chain stitch could dig me out of the black hole I had created for myself, literally and metaphorically. I 
had to adjust the size of the chains a few times to get it right but then sweet relief you can cut them all the same length and know that they will be right once they were big enough to encompass the next stitch with the two ends within it and have enough space that the curve would be wide enough not to crack the pearl the chain stitch really did save me with this one it's still by no means perfect but i still have a leafy shape and quite a smooth turning angle throughout and the texture in the middle unmistakably lifts it somehow it feels quite sort of art deco-y i guess with the black coming through the gold and I'd be happy to give this one a 6 out of 10. Give me some cream felt and I'd give it a go again. So, perhaps not the usual way and maybe not even cut work to traditionalists, but it is a way to do cut work without a base down first. So I decided to give what I'm calling broken cut work a go. Again, without the books to lean on, I'm just winging it with this one and guessing that so long as the cut isn't too long so that it bags out, it should be fine. And it's more about trying to randomise where the breaks fall with this one as much as is possible. This one is very much inspired by an embroiderer I admire on Instagram called Hattie McGill, who I've seen use this in some of her pieces and she makes it look really good, so I thought it was definitely worth giving a go. The big decision is what's going to be too long and cause it to bag out and when you need to start bringing the breaks in. Something tells me that once I've started this, the bigger shapes would do better with this because you could have more breaks and it would look more random and therefore more uniformed somehow. But with this one, because it's quite a small space overall, getting the cuts to sit in different places was kind of the biggest challenge and it looks fine more so from afar. This one did not give me too much of a brain ache, which is what I would say is its saving grace and what is most fun about it. This one felt pretty easy in the end and it really needs an edge to make it look like something. So I popped some Elizabethan twist on the end to finish it up nicely. I think it's best viewed from a little bit of a distance, but it's pleasing and I'd give it a 7 out of 10. If you've made it right through to the end then well done you. I am really pleased that you've stayed and I hope that that means that you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you'd like to stick around then do think about subscribing and hitting the bell so that you know when I release a new video which happens once a week on a Sunday so if you want to see more content like this about craft and embroidery and stitching then do stick around. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now!